Hello, welcome to the 13th video in the series making simple flappy robin using Cocos 2DX JavaScript. So last video then you'll remember we self sorted out the collision with the tubes. Um, I'll just let the robin go along here and hopefully it'll collide and I can convince myself we're starting from the same position we left off. We are indeed okay. Um, and now what we want to do in this video is add some labels onto the screen. So we're very, very near the near the end here. In this video, we'll add on like a start game and a game over label and a couple of labels for the scoring. Next video, we'll do the scoring. In the final video, we'll add the, the sounds. So we're nearly, nearly done. So I'm in game.js here, but I need to be in game manager.js. And I need to add some constants in before we get going with actually doing something with the label. So the first thing, I'll just do K uh, font size and game over and this will be for the game over and start game label and we'll set this to 48 and then I want to cade font size for the score labels as well so I'll just call this score and that'll be set to 24 and we want the font name so we'll just say font name and we'll set it equal to I don't know this is just do courier shall we so sort of half nice and Another couple of little ones here. I just want um, K score X equal to 20 and uh, K score uh, Y also equal to 20. That's You'll see how they're used in a bit. They're just used for positioning the uh, the scoring labels. Okay, so now we've got those. We need to think about how we want to add our labels into our application. So... We, the normal way you uh, create a label is to use, um, well, the normal way the way we use here, label TTF, true type font it's called. And because we're going to be having four of them on the screen, what we're going to actually do is add a function in that allows us to add a label without repeating a huge amount of code. So I'm just going to call, make a new function called uh, add label. Uh, it's going to take a few arguments, this function as well, so we can set everything up okay depending on what we need. So we're going to have as an argument the uh, the text, then we'll have the x position, the y, uh, well, coordinate. Uh, we'll have whether it's visible or not, so we'll just call that vis. Um, z index for the z index that we want to set when we add it. Um, we want the color, and also we'll have the font size as well that we want for this label. So the way we make a label then is we, first of all, behave ourselves and make a var, and we basically use a CC and it's called label TTF. And in the constructor here, what we want to set is our text, and then we'll set our font name as well. So K our font name, I think it called, I can't remember, I've forgotten already yet, K font name. And last thing we want to do is the font size that we're going to use in there. And that line there creates our label for us. We want to do a couple more things. We want label and set position. And we'll set that at our X and Y that we've defined. We want also to be able to set our color. So we'll just do label and set color. And we'll set that to our col, like so. Which I think I have to do for this one. I can't exactly remember. I think I have to do color like this. And then we want to set our visibility. You'll see how that um, works in a little bit and to why, because obviously we need to hide some of the labels, the start and um, game over label will be need to shown and hidden at different points, set equal to viz. And last but not least, we'll add this to our actual layer. So we'll add our label to the layer. And what we're going to do is set it to the Z index that we send into the function. And last but not least, we'll return so we can keep a reference to it, our label. So that's our label function. What we can do then here now, so inside the init, is actually set up our various labels. So the first one we're going to set up then is going to be called a game over label. And that label is going to be uh, equal to this dot add label and now let's set some text so we're going to call this uh, game over and then the next argument that we've asked for here is the x and the y so here this is going to be in the middle of the screen this one so it'll be size dot width divided by two and height divided by two so size dot width divided by two and size dot height divided by two uh, it's going to be not visible at the start 
It'll only be set visible when the game is actually uh, over. We'll set it the same as the Robin's Z index. The color that we're going to be use here will do from the Cocos framework, just red like so. And then the other argument here that we want is the font size, and that'll be K font size. I can't remember it, K font size, game over like so. So that's our first label added. The next label we want to add then will be the uh, restart label. So I just call this or start game start label like so. And we'll just do tap to start. Or let's say click to start, seeing as we're technically clicking, or I am anyway. And here we want to position this in a slightly different place. I want this slightly higher. So I'm going to say um, size.height divided by 3 times 2, like so. Uh, in our case, right at the start of the game, this is going to be true. Everything else stays the same. So what I'm going to do here is go back into the browser very quickly and just refresh and check everything looks all right. And now you can see we've got a click to start label. And at the moment, the game doesn't show, and this doesn't, the game over label doesn't show, and this doesn't disappear when we start the game. So let's sort that to a little bit of logic uh, now. So we've got our game over label here. We want this to be visible when we move into game over. So here's game over here. So what we'll do here is just in here, we'll set this uh, visible equals true. And then we've got the re-enable after game over, after the pause. Here we want that to be false, so that we want this to go away. And then the other thing we want is our start label, game start label here. This then, we want that to disappear when we actually start a game. So let's go into on touch began. And this here, you can see the start game is where we start the game. So let's just go in here and type visible. I could probably that actually put that in the start game function actually, but never mind, I'll do that here. Oh no, if I top it, it's much cleaner to put it in there. Hang on a minute, let's uh, cut that out and go down into start game. Okay, so in start game, then we'll set this game start label visible equal to false because we want this uh, not to be shown, obviously, once we've clicked to start the game. And the other thing we want is in re-enable after game over, then we want this to be true because we want to click to start. So if I just refresh this now, now you can see when I click to start, it disappears. If I hit the floor, we get game over appearing. And then we get click to start when the robin's ready to go, which looks nice. So the last thing to do then here is add the score and the high score label. So here what I want to do is I want a score label, which I'll call like this. And we'll set the score label at the moment to one, two, three, four, five zeros like this. And this time the position is going to be slightly different here. So we want the X position to be the K score X and we'll have the Y position to be size dot height minus K score Y. I think I called it K score X and Y. Yes, I did. We want it visible, same Z index. And here we want the font size to be the smaller score font size here which will add this, and then we want the high score label, which will name like so, and just for reference, so we know which ones we will set this to 10,000 for now, we'll change that later on. And now we want minus uh, K score Y times three to leave a bit of a gap here. Everything else stays the same, and this should also add our label. So if I just refresh the board, you can see that we've now got uh, a couple of labels uh, on the screen here. Now you notice that we've actually got the numbers chopped off a bit because there's something missing for this and we actually need to set the anchor point for these labels here. Um, I assume you know what an anchor point is, but if you don't, then we have here an example. Normally by default, the uh, labels, sprites, things like that are anchored in the middle, which is 0 by 5 by, uh, not by 0 0.5 and I confuse commas and dots horribly there, like this, which means that when we give our X and our Y, it'll be based in the middle of the sprite. An anchor point of zero, zero will position 
the bottom left corner of the sprite act the x and y that we give her a zero by one will be zero for the x but at the top in the y position so you can see the four outside anchor points we're going to set here we're going to set our labels to have anchor points of zero by one so they actually the point that they, they get of, of the label that gets positioned at where we specify will be the top right corner of the label so the way we set that then for the label is quite easy it's a simple function in the framework that you can call uh, called set anchor point and we're just going to set that to zero by one and we're going to do that for I could have probably have written things a little bit more efficiently here, but it doesn't matter. Like so, and now when we go back to the browser, we should be able to see the labels a bit better. And indeed we had, because we've got the score and the high score label there. Okay then, so that's it then for this video. Um, we've got everything set up in the next video to keep track of our score and our high score. And then the last one we can add in the sounds. Thanks very much for watching.